high school. School committee like we have order. forums from all around, so I want to call the meeting order. Yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, okay. This is the uh, first meeting of uh, this group that met a month ago or so. Uh, maybe more than that. Yeah. 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 Uh, to figure out. Well, actually, the question to figure out is exactly the first thing I think we're going to talk about. The Finance Committee, uh, at one of its meetings, uh, spent a little bit of time trying to think about what we might be doing here. And uh, we uh, don't want to set an agenda, but we did. We came up with some possible ideas for things that people might have an interest in. And we moved into some categories of things. Why don't I just hand out uh, things that we have to do? And some, just some quick ideas, and it, it seemed like uh, the uh, the enthusiasm that we all have for getting together uh, in order to point it down to some actual uh, work effort, um, in which this committee is supposed to accomplish. Uh, we began to think about different things. One is that uh, what do what do the people I get from this committee. Of what kind of possible objectives might we have for this uh, joint committee task force? Um, another topic was uh, what should the structure of membership of this be? Um, because we had a little bit of conversations about that. Uh, what sort of procedures should we be following? What kind of information should we be collecting in order to get at uh, what is uh, help to solve these possible objectives of this uh, joint committee? So uh, what I'd like to do uh, in the beginning is just get some ideas from the rest of you around these topics, see how well they match up with some of the possibilities or things that we thought about, uh, and uh, any other ideas that people have. And I'll give you a moment to take a look at that, and um, I'm open to any and all suggestions. This was. This is the result of your brainstorming? This yeah. This committee? Yeah. Oh, just sort of an informal conversation. Not brainstorming yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because there is a combination of, you know, problem, solution, root cause. We can probably do that. So I think the second one is what I'm interested in is that. Is that something that we need to address up front before we go too far? The second, uh, who should be really part of these conversations? And I think the select board eventually, mm -hmm. when there's a committee, you, you uh, appoint the committee. But that's a good question. I think that's a good question to yeah, begin with. The, the conversations that we had uh, were of the nature that um, there are a lot of people that should have an input into the things that we want to find out. A lot of people in town, a lot of people we would like to have input from. Uh, and uh, whether that's on a formal or informal basis is, is a different sort of question, but it's clear that somehow or another we want to find a method that we can bring in people to come and talk to ideas and uh, talk to about uh, the things that we need to accomplish. Um, so we uh, took a little bit of our cue from um, the success of the School building committee, actually, the Street School Building Committee, because that's set up and that's a fairly big committee. But the work that the big committee does all depends upon work that subcommittees and groups that are hired to do things uh, do bring information to the committee and then they, the committee discusses it. So, uh, you know, we started off with a committee of, of 13 uh, and uh, 13 plus, and um, that's not necessarily bad, given that we use that example of how the Wall Street School Building Committee worked. That's a very big committee, too. And yet it's worked very, pretty fine because uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the work that comes to committees are already done by some subcommittees or some mm -hmm. people. So, um, and so is that the kind of thing you're getting at, at every? Yes, and actually this is, this is good because it aligns with some of the conversations that uh, we've been having yeah. that this would probably be the planning meeting where we would decide on some of these questions and then go forward. Yeah, right. I don't. I don't. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
That's exactly, I think, what we think that this first meeting isn't really to accomplish much except right. for <laughs> figure out what we're doing and how we're doing. Right. And uh, with 13 people, that's a good trick. Yeah. <laughs> my, my thought, as I'm reading this, I think that the, the big picture here, you know, there's a lot of positive things that I'm reading, but I think the first thing we have to do, and I mean, regardless of, to expand this town, is going to take infrastructure. I think that's one of the biggest things that, when, when, even when I was running previously, that was one of the main thoughts I had, is how are we going to get infrastructure beyond what we have? And I think that's one of the things that is essential in order to move this town forward. And it's costly. And how do we do that? I mean, supporting the schools, you know, you've got other departments in this town you have to be supportive of and deal with, but uh, how, do, how do we get the townspeople to buy into infrastructure? Because that's, that's going to be catastrophic in cost. So that's, that's I see all this, which is a phenomenal, but my view is how do we move forward with infrastructure in order to obtain some of this? But let me let me uh, let me kind of rephrase what you said. It might be another objective is to develop uh, a, develop a sense of what infrastructure is needed at Granby and where it's needed. It's been talked about going from downtown all the way well, from here all the way to the Belchertown line to begin with. And Jay had had conversations. That I guess the state is going to be repaving at some point. I'm not quite sure they're going to be repaving, and they said and indicated. Correct me if I'm wrong. That they would have no problem if we put infrastructure in beforehand. Just put, lay the pipes in, and then they, you know, they would take care of the rest of of paving it in the whole bed. If you want me to expand upon that, go for it. Uh, from fiscal year 2019 to fiscal year 2022, there's going to be four projects on Route 202. Project one will be the roundabout at School mm -hmm. Street and Route 202. Correct. When that is completed, then they plan on resurfacing from School Street to Belchertown. Okay, that's project two. Project three, as it currently stands, and all these projects are subject to change. We all know that. Everything's subject to change. Will be the reorganizing of five corners. And five corners is where we currently have sewer to now. No water, but we do have sewer to it. Uh, and then project four would be resurfacing Route 202 from five corners to Lyman Street in South Hadley. They finished down there. But I just want everybody to know, like Steve says, if we do our own work underground before they come in to resurface it, we don't have to pay for the resurfacing. They'll do it. But we have to coordinate it with them. Mm -hmm. But we're talking from physical year 2019 to physical year 2022 is a pretty short period of time to get that stuff done. And in another area, if you don't get it done before they do their work, they have what's called the DOT five-year rule. In other words, you mess up any of their work, you pay to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put that on the table because those are the rules that we'll have to work to if, if that's the way we want to choose to go. Um, an alternate way, of infrastructure. We have water on Nula La Road, but no sewer. Uh, I talked to the Chicopee planner today at the meeting I was in, and MGM will match the state's 550,000, I think it is, John, if they turn Westover on. He told me that today, we should know that one July. And then Chicopee is looking to expand their infrastructure along Westover. And there's a possibility that we could connect 
to the Chicopee sewer system and the water system, which comes from the club. These are all possibilities. It's got to be negotiated, got to be agreed upon, and everything like that. But that's what the town planner told me from Chicopee. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, Steve said sewers from here all the way up to Belcher Town uh, or up to the, to the uh, school. And, but I didn't hear you mention that as part of it. I didn't mention, hear you mention paving 202 from here out. That way. The paving will go from five corners. This is their DOT current plan yeah. on Route 202. It's five corners after they finish the work of redesign all the way to South Hadley, School Street, redesign. Belcher Town. There's nothing planned in the middle. So if we were going to put in sewers between here and the school, would we have to then do? We'd have to. We'd have to. We'd have to fund the whole thing, including the resurfacing, which would be approved by them. We would uh, need a grant. That's, grand that's grand what grand I mean. Grand Everybody grand in here, this is grand <laughs> is the way I'm looking at it. I mean, it, it, as far as infrastructure would be great, and mm -hmm. something the town could use, something the town could use many years ago. I know when I first moved in the community is, yes. in 1996, they said, well, this, the um, sewer system went up to the, to the top of Amherst Street to the crest. They said, well, yeah, eventually they're going to bring it down. It's going to go all the way down Amherst Street. So we're here 23 years later. It didn't go any further than where it is right now. Well, to put an answer to I, that. Hang, hang on, Jeff. Okay. I, I'm just making a point. Obviously, we got to look towards the future. Mm -hmm. But also, what does that bring into Granby mm -hmm. along, the, along the 202 corridor? Aim out first, Steve, and the cost to that to this town. I don't think this town can afford to do something like that. Wasn't there a committee so, that looked at yeah, this? Yeah, I was. Right? That's what I was yeah. going to say. In yeah. 2015, so it down, it down, or? no, there was 2015. There was a study that was done yeah. uh, from the taking the sewers, which currently go to Fins Hill. You know, off the, mm -hmm. where yeah. the seniors are there. Yeah. It would in 2015 dollars. It was eight million dollars to carry the sewer from Fins Hill to Village Center. That's the study that I read on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm mean, saying that was already out there, and that was in 2015 dollars. It was so, eight million dollars to do that. So maybe that infrastructure that you're talking about mm -hmm. is is a subcommittee as part of this larger committee, because I, I agree that this is such a mammoth undertaking, even us sitting around the table, and what we're talking about is huge. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way that we're gonna be able to tackle this is by having one large committee, and then what's mm -hmm. what what's gonna be our designated subcommittees? You know, what's important? Mm -hmm. What are the objectives? And then setting up subcommittees to deal, so maybe that's one of the subcommittees. So infrastructure, as you pointed out, is costly. No, and I, I, yeah, I mean, I being that, what we really should focus on is how do we make money. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would suggest that the primary focus of this committee should be figuring out how does the town make money, new alternative ways, grants, you know, basically towards infrastructure costs, public-private partnership, whatever. Um, but the various subcommittees should be focused on here's an idea how we may make money, Subcommittee go out and investigate it, come back, tell us if it's feasible or not, and can we actually do it? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's all fine and good to talk about infrastructure, uh, even though you, you could argue if we do put infrastructure in, does that mean that anyone's going to come to town, make it more attractive? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but at the end of the day, what is going to grease the wheels here is money. financial stability, greater income to the town, above and beyond residential taxation, and that should be the focus. I so, agree. Yeah. I think this is all great, and I don't think anyone's going to disagree with anything that we discussed. But if we can go back to our starting point, we, we are going uh, into the solutions, and they will come back anyway. We're going to hear about infrastructure. We're going to hear about uh, ways to generate revenue. If we can establish this larger problem that we can divide into smaller pieces and the subcommittees, then we can say, okay, we know why we have these subcommittees. We, this is a problem, and this is how we want to address the problem. Because uh, all of these will probably, uh, will more than likely come up uh, during the course of this conversation. So I think we also need to identify as far as what we need for subcommittees. Yes. Right. You know, what, what, yeah. what, what committees are going to be tasked right. with what? Right. So, okay. so, so again, it's the, what's the structure of the, of the committee itself? 
Yes, right? but I guess what I'm saying is if we can take a step back and ask ourselves what the scope of this project, the work, is going to be, then it will allow us to determine what type of subcommittees we're going to have. Well, if we're talking about the entire town, that's one thing. If we're saying, hey, you know, let's focus on what the planning planning board had already uh, uh, decided as far as the uh, zoning business areas, that's another thing. So we need to really decide on the problem, the scope, and then we can. I, I think you have to talk about it the whole time. Part of the problem we've had in the past is we've had this artificial bifurcation of this part of the town, that part of the town, whatever. And basically, we're a single organization. And so you have to plan in accordance and think about it as a whole organization and not in bifurcation. And uh, if you fragment it, in turn, let's put it this way. Uh, there's no organization in the world, whether it be municipality, private company, publicly traded, that can cut their way to profitability. You can basically have short-term stays in terms of, of, of cutting stuff, particularly people, but you have to figure out a way to grow the pie. And so my recommendation would be we talked one thing here about brainstorming, that we use this committee to brainstorm to come up with potential ideas of how the town can make money. And then the subcommittee should, we should vote then on what we think is most possible. The subcommittee should be all about this idea that potentially make money, go out, explore it, come back. Can we do it? Can't we do it? What's involved? And go from there. That's the only way we're going to grow the pie. We're not going to grow it by like sticking to the old fragmentation of this department or that department. The only way we are, we're not going to be able to do it either by cutting some more. We need to figure out better ways and smarter ways and different ways besides residential taxation to get money into the town. Period. End of story. So are, are, are we talking about business development? Absolutely. Are we talking about then infrastructure because it's not really it's not really fragmenting it's really going with what we have because yeah. if we're going to go and, and that's fine we can go with the entire town but we're still restricted by the the locations where we can do certain things and well we i mean it, it, i'm not really yeah, historically, favor, you know favoring one side or the other historically we did okay because we had the dump we had the public power partnership with the dump which right. we, we backed into this new property so in history to me. but nonetheless that's that's how come we were okay Right. That went away, basically, we got into trouble. Um, when we were getting the dump money, uh, we didn't say, oh, well, the dump money is only for sanitation or whatever. It was for, it was a whole town. Mm -hmm. It basically was a big pot of money that the, the schools were doing fine, everything was doing fine. So I think if we just explore ways that the town can make additional money in terms of the division of where money goes afterwards, so that's a good argument. But that's not, I don't think we, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. I think, okay. I think we're talking about how we should tackle the problem. At the end, I mm -hmm. think we agree that we need to grow that pie. Yeah. We need to find ways to generate revenue. I think we should start at the root. And if we answer this question, it'll probably solve a lot. What is the town of Granby's greatest asset that people would want? If we <laughs> identify that. I think our greatest asset is one of our biggest problems. We're a bedroom community. A lot of people like that we're a bedroom community. On the other side, we're a bedroom community, yeah. which hurts us residentially mm -hmm. paying taxes. Yeah. Okay, people people drive through us to get somewhere else. Right, and what so, I was trying to they want to live here. They want to sleep here at the end of the day. So yeah. then yeah. then we're looking at a two prong. One yeah. is economic development, the other is how do we attract more families into the town? How do we attract more people to come in and buy homes and send their kids to our schools and pay well, property well, taxes? How do we define what's good quality of life in this town? Mm -hmm. You know, so let's say hypothetically we come up with a money making plan that you know, it's uh, cheap electricity for everyone, okay, because we build our own power yeah. company or something else like that. There's an attraction, basically, to people who move to town. Or let's say we come up hypothetically with uh, uh, you know, our you know, own septic system or our own waste company type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, or a leverage net, except the town of Granby, so your high street streaming is cheaper. There's reasons for that. More importantly, if they make money, you can pump that money into probably what is on every town's biggest asset, which is a school system. You know, the, there was a fellow at Cornell, PhD, did a study, uh, and basically determined that the major economic reason, you know, not social reasons, but the major economic reason for second incomes as the dominant rule throughout the nation 
is the majority of the second income went to pay for the higher taxes in the better school systems. Mm -hmm. So if we figure out a way that A, increases quality of life uh, for, for basically the town, and perhaps that's a discussion we should have, what is good quality of life for a town? Uh, and B, uh, builds us a pile of money the way it's dumped in that we can then put into school system infrastructure or whatever, that's probably the, that's probably a good game. And I think we, we need another another dump, but obviously something like the dump that's bringing in that extra revenue or into even, the town. Or even three or four dump type things. Something like that that's bringing the extra revenue into the town that also takes some of the burden off the taxpayers so they're not, every time we need something, it's not looking to increase taxes. So if you were to call this committee to encapsulate everything that we've said so far, what would it be? Because it doesn't sound as though it's an economic development committee. It sounds like it's even more than that. It's a make money committee. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not like we need a marketing committee. We need a, no, no, you those know? are subcommittees. Yeah, but I'm right. saying if we were to call the overarching umbrella committee something to encapsulate what we're talking about, what what would it be called? Well, when we call it true. Yeah, you know, when we call it yeah. quality of life committee. Here's economic. Okay. You know, the grand Quality of Life Committee, because yeah. in essence, at the end of the day, what brings people into town is, this is a cool place to live. Uh, I think one thing we want to be careful about is uh, concentrating too much on just one side of the equation. Uh, you can imagine that, I suppose we have a lot of ideas for how to get some economic development more granted. Uh, first of all, you need money up front before you do that. And the money up front is going to come from where? Yeah. All right, so you're going to have to be very careful about what you're asking for people to do without a plan that shows where the payback is going to come from. And the second thing is that if we talk only about the income side, mm -hmm. then it leaves the question of what is the money going to be spent on? If we don't come up with what the idea is of where we think the money should be spent, in some broad kind of terms, then everybody is going to have their own idea. And pretty soon, if you bring in $2 million, you're going to find you need four. Because you're going to be in the same situation as it is now. Is that once you get, and it's a situation we were in when we, when we had the land for right now. Uh, the money came in, and before people really started thinking about it, we were spending these one-time revenue streams on ongoing expenses. They were being built into the operating budget. If, if and there so was a, if there was a plan in place when that happened, yeah. Yeah. maybe all the money would have gone into that. Agreed. Right. And that's a big part right. of mm -hmm. why we're in the situation that we're in. Right. So I, I, th I think that I think that this committee uh, owes it to the town to uh, be able to think about both sides of the equation, the income side as well as the operating mm -hmm. side. You know, assess the rolling stock and assess the buildings. Right, right. But I also think, part of you know, from the landfill though too, the, the, this, the town and the, the residents of the town uh, benefited greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you, you have a new uh, safety complex that didn't cost anything to build, right? We have the safety complex, we have the uh, highway department. Highway department. And a lot of your a lot of your towns or cities, they're you know, they're not being bonded and stuff for you know, and taking out loans to build places like that. So that's that is I mean, we can say, yeah, we don't have all that money in, in our bank, if you will, but we you know what? We have nice assets to show for those things. that money was it was spent for a reason. I think, you know, somehow, some way, as you said, we need to find something to uh, replace that so we can replenish our, uh, you know. Yeah, our I mean, when, when Grandy finally got around to thinking about the money, uh, it made, I think, some wise choices. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and set up some of the capital stock that will last quite a while. Uh, so, no, it's not enough. If we can go back to the, uh, what we're going to do with this. So there is the side let me take another step back. What I heard is that we're talking about generating revenue for some things, whatever, whatever those mm -hmm. are. That's going to require that we understand what we are able to do as a town. So going back to what Jay was saying, 
that almost sounds like a SWOT analysis that we need to do to understand what our strengths are, what, you know, what our weaknesses are, the opportunities. And then we need to do a needs assessment, and that's going to determine where we're going to be spending yeah. some of that generated revenue. So we have to really do both uh, in conjunction with uh, each other. Uh, so I'm wondering how we want to really go in that direction because this is a great conversation, but it's gonna, I'm afraid it's gonna remain as a conversation unless we really make it a, a, a systematic approach to what we're trying to resolve here. Well, I think it, in order for it not just become conversation, we have certain components in the equation. Agreed. And what I mean by, I know for a fact that we're gonna be getting a grant writer for the town. He's great, Jay's great, he writes grants and does that he'd be an asset to the grant writer also. But I think that having a grant writer that would be a component of that big picture. It's one small component of the big picture because they can actually go out and research and find, if at all possible, necessary grants to implement some of the, the, the what we're talking about tonight. So it's, it's, it's components that we all have to build on at this particular time. That's how I see it. Well, the only, Which, I'm sorry, Steve. Go for it. Okay. The only program that I know of that's on the table right now in the state of Massachusetts is called the SMART program. It's Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target Program. It allows the municipality to lease their own land, which Grampy has hundreds and hundreds of acres to solar developers, and we get a lease paid. An example, I'm gonna use a figure of $150,000, which is the medium figure, a year for the next 20 years for the every 15 acre parcel we lease up. How much is it? What, did you, what was the amount? $150,000 for 20 years is $3 million and we have zero capital outlay. At the end of 20 years, the town can sit down with that developer and renegotiate it if they want to keep the solar farm or whatever is in at that particular time. Or by the rules of the current state, the state's current rules, the developer has to turn the land back to its natural state. Did you say for every 15 acres? That's correct. That was my question. How much is so the thing you look at too, and I've noticed, I'm sure everybody's noticed the solar farms, mm -hmm. if you will, around town. Mm -hmm. So those are private companies they are. receiving money. Yeah. So that and, that and those companies are receiving money um, for land that's being leased. So I that, mean, my question is, in addition to leasing, can we do revenue share with them? That's all to be determined. But if we want to do, the negotiations would be between the solar developer. An example is the land. I said I figure I was using 150000 a year for the next 20 years. Uh, we, or the Energy Committee, we've been in contact with an entity auditor, Amersco, if, and they've already surveyed our land here in Granby. And for an example, we have the old quarry area, which has all kind of hills when they dug it up. We could probably only get about $120,000 a year for that for 20 years because they have to do a lot of flattening out to get it ready to service for solar panels. Versus behind the junior senior high school we looked at, that's already flat. That's worth $195,000 a year for the next 20 years. And one of the things that, well Jennifer probably knows because I said about it when we were campaigning was a lot of the town residents put a lot of time, energy, and money to that new ball field behind the um, junior senior high school, which cannot be fertilized now or anything like that. And I'd like to see us put some solar back there to create some revenue. And part of that revenue was to be create the town, which the school can use, a new ball field at Dufresne's Park. Dufresne's Park is within walking distance of the school. I mean, that's just one of my suggestions. We might get one or two farms back there because what can you do within a thousand feet of those public wells? Not a whole lot. I mean, what, that's, that's one revenue generating idea. Right. What more other revenue generating ideas can we come up with? Yeah. 
Well, as I said before, and uh, I will let John take the lead on that, because if Westover turns into a 24-7 airport, that could open a lot of avenues. But it is the closest it's ever been. It's not there yet. And in, like, as a pilot myself, 90% of the airports in our country are all uncontrolled. As a pilot, we turn on the landing lights at night by key to mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, not uncontrolled, it's controlled on so, the well, but, Yeah, but they call them uncontrolled because there's no tower people. So, so, so yeah. kind of go back to what Emory was talking, I, I guess is uh, at what point, so this is, like we said, a, a quality of life committee. Mm -hmm. So at what point, what are we going to charge this committee with? And then, as you said before, can break us out into uh, subcommittees uh, and go from there. I think one of the things we first look at is what are the options for revenue? Do we take it, you know, amongst ourselves to, okay, everybody go out there and start researching different types of revenue, bring back different type of uh, ideas. And as you said before, you know what, we'll put the big sheets up on the thing and we'll start writing things down and we'll go through that and, you know, get those things going and then decide, okay, let's break off in the subcommittees. What's real, what's not real, what can we do? Let's start investigating it. And then kind of bring the information back and keep on going down, you know, schedule meetings, keep on going, you know, have our results. So eventually you get to a point where some of this is feasible. Let's start reaching out to whatever may, may need be to, to, to get some of these things done. But I think this may be a, a bifurcation. One, how do we raise more money? To be, what's the best use of that money in terms of quality of life for the town? How do we define the town, you know, uh, I mean, I think personally it'd be great if we had a restaurant that serves something besides pizza. <laughs> but, but those, those, but those are things I'm talking about. Yeah. So, it, so that's like you know what? That's an idea that we have. Well, yeah. how do we get someone to come in that will, is worth them yeah. to have a? I think, a you know, I think also it'd be great if we, if we could get more diversity this time. Yeah. You know, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Is what you need. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. Cindy's Cindy's in Happy Days is, is probably saying, "Gee, we we see a lot of things besides yeah. pizza." But <laughs> <laughs> did you see MassLive.com <laughs> today? <laughs> Cindy's is the number one hot dog, hot dog. place yeah, yeah. In, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. That's yeah. right. I didn't need Mass Live to tell me that. <laughs> Where was that? Cindy Cindy's. Drive Their hot dogs are amazing. According to who? Uh, they had Mass Live people. No, 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 I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like the, you threw them under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was it on Mass Live. Mass Live. Yeah. 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 They, they went to the yeah, eastern part of the state. Right. Right. <laughs> they went to the eastern part of the state, the western part of the state. Maybe we did that. Maybe we basically take the committee and have two focuses. Yeah. Raise money mm -hmm. and be what defines good quality of life of a town that make this town better, to make it a town that people want to move to and we mm -hmm. go from there. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, talking about suggestions, I think one thing we should look at is find some people that moved into this town in the past year, two years. Why'd you move here? Well, that'd be me. Well, I moved here three years ago. So why'd you move here? So basically I found a rental, a new job, uh, it was cheap, and then I found the I found the worst the worst house on the best street. See? So, <laughs> <laughs> worked out for <laughs> but that's what I mean. But but people are people are moving into Granby, and I think it's to ask them, you know, why why are they moving into Granby? Because you look at some of these houses they're building now around town, they're they're costly. Mm -hmm. So why are people moving into Granby? There must yeah, be a good reason why well, to move here. Probably, yeah, a couple of reasons. Definitely. I yeah. I have three new neighbors, and my street had like no turnover for decades. But they're all young families. They're all here from mm -hmm. school. And I'm here four years because it I was in the middle of <laughs> nowhere, in the middle of everywhere at the same time. Yeah. yeah in in the future, we're going to see a lot younger people moving into Granby because, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest with you, the seniors are in negative net income with these tax raises because they don't get the their social security doesn't go up as high as the property taxes and mm -hmm. like, sales taxes like, and everything else. Does. But like any well, area, you, you overturn, like neighborhoods yeah. overturn. Yeah. Yeah. Towns yeah. do yeah. the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Track those young families. They yeah. got to have a great school yeah. system. Mm -hmm. But you also got to have, this is a nice town to live in because yeah. down, town common there's whatever. Yeah. Uh, we have these types of activities or a bike trail. Or yeah. Yeah. All those, nature trails. Yeah. All, those, yeah. all those types of amenities. Yes. Um, so maybe that's the second prong of mm -hmm. what defines a great community that we can get really good people to move to this town, make a great community, and how do we fund all this with how do we raise money? 
The uh, sort of the simplest way I think to put that is that there are two separate things we're looking at. Where are we getting revenue and how much? Where are we spending money and how much? Mm -hmm. And we need we need to take a look at both of those things mm -hmm. and be able to hopefully come to a point where if they can meet. <laughs> So we have not too much of a difference between the income coming in and what the expenditures are. I, I don't want to hit this one too hard because I'll get something thrown at me, but I want to put it out there anyways. Everybody knows I like looking for grants. I mean, that's no secret. Uh, on the, the MSBA, they won't give us any money for the junior, senior high school or West Street School because the prior superintendent wrote them up as uneconomically repairable. Correct, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. That's what D Desi told me. In fact, I don't want to speak out of Not turn. Not un uneconomically, but um, West Street instructional. School. But West Street yeah, School, yeah. Right. Senior high school. But they included both. That was the problem. Yeah, so when we applied for the accelerated roof You're right. Windows, it was denied. It was denied because what was proposed was submitted as if the only way to right. move forward would be with renovation, with a full-on renovation. So we can't pick right. and do the roof one year and the windows one year and because that, they were all good. tied together. As, all. Is there yeah, some way good. that we could, and this would be basically the school built uh, committee and school department, oh yeah. is there any way we can look at reevaluating that even with an engineering report because the energy engineering report says that's a viable school yeah I, mm -hmm. it sounds to me like it was an error in the submission of the application well I, I can't case, speak for whoever that, did it at the time but I that's can't what either, it states but if that's the case how do we go about part of it too was correcting that yeah enrollment yeah, exactly. and part of it was is that it was submitted as if we needed more space and as you know with the decline in enrollment mm -hmm. that's not the case anymore right. so I think if we resubmitted with that language, then we probably have a better chance of, of okay. acquiring some MSBA Could we get a copy support. of where it says that so what all of us brainstorming together, we can right. figure a good way to write it? Over the phone. I mean, oh, that, it was over yeah. the phone? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a tactic. What I think we should focus on is what are our strategies mm -hmm. okay. overall, yeah. as opposed to the, over the, the phone. tactic and stuff. When I talk to, yeah. yeah. They told no, no, me. no, just th what, what Jay's talking about must be documented somewhere that somebody said this that, is not that's a viable what I'm structure or something. Oh, that we, part, yeah. yes, we, we need We, we, we need a copy of that. Yeah. So we can say, okay, we don't think this is true, and right. for these reasons right. to resubmit it, because if we could have got the MSBA to put the roof on the junior-senior high school, we would have had $1.4 million left in the kitty, and we wouldn't have had no squalor, right? Am I right or wrong? Do we have to know? Is it too late to try a resubmission on a basis? I was told they would not um, entertain. Th they would not entertain, entertain. single one-off projects like a roof or windows. It, you have to rehab the whole school yes. in its entirety because oh. it's so far behind. But is there so we did not commit to a project yet? If that's what you're asking, mm -hmm. so we did not start. But when we applied, in fact, we went back. We tried to do it. Uh, uh, in two different pieces and two different approaches, they said that they would not. Right. But if there is a way to approach it differently, that you know we can. So there's two programs. There's accelerated repair. Yes. And then there's the loan program for building new schools or renovating. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a third one you might want to look at. It's called zero energy schools, and we're in zone five. If you want to know. I did not know about that. One. That's a federal one. Cheryl, do we have a contact at the MSBA yes. that can? Uh, educate us on this situation and how we go about remediating. Mm -hmm. Right. What yeah. steps can we take to? Obviously, it was a mistake, an error made. What steps do we need to take if right. we can to yep. correct this? And right. do the we language we need allow. to use. Right. Do we need well, that too? Right. And right. Yeah. We should talk to the elected officials. See if they can help, help us. us. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of not using accelerated repair and working with um, the engineering company or a, a consultant to help rewrite a submission for the renovation as right. opposed to they didn't say no they just said you're not going to get accelerated repair because right. the building needs a total rehab yeah they told me i can tell you the name was uh 
he told me it's uneconomically repairable. Both schools were submitted as uneconomically. Those are his words, not yeah. mine. Right. Yeah. So you said we need to actually see the documentation, see the paperwork yeah. that says what it says. And then maybe we can read that. We have an engineering report upstairs from the energy engineers say it's a viable school. Mm -hmm. Well, we know it's a viable school. Yeah, we but we got that. we got to have that in writing to yes. prove it to engineers. And, and and it seems to me as though we need to have an educated conversation with somebody at MSBA that can say, here's how you need to submit paperwork. Here's the language that you need to use. It's actually working with the consultant mm -hmm. that can that has worked through projects like this mm -hmm. before. Granby is certainly not the only town who had submitted a project and then was either rejected for one of a you know a host of reasons mm -hmm. and then resubmitted again. Yeah, I was just thinking the part where you get the status of the junior senior high school changed. Sure. That's all yeah. I was. That's where I was going for. Yep. Shirley, the um, OPM for the he, door, yes. he looked into it. Yes, so he's the one that I spoke with, and you know we had several conversations around how that could work. Uh, for our next meeting, we should actually have someone taking minutes. I've been. She's been taking. Good job. <laughs> Secretary, so all for, those in favor. So for our, next, <laughs> for our next meeting, it will be you. Second. Yeah, I'll second. <laughs> I'll keep them up. You got it. All right, but I mean, let's, let's get back to what strategies should yeah. we look at and how do we develop those strategies. You know, and I, I would recommend we start with the easier one, which is how to make money. Because I think the quality of life thing is going to be a longer term uh, project in terms of Surveys of young families coming in, surveys of mm -hmm. townspeople, why yep. you're here, what do you want, what would make for a great town, you know, that type of stuff. So yep. how do we develop strategies for making money? I think without investing any capital, because we have nothing to invest. That's, that's our right. biggest that's problem. Part of it too. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be the next step, right? You start saying we can make money this way, and then we're going to invest it in these things we're going to build to bring more families in. Yeah. Or, you know, it, 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 well, pretty much, so that's the that's the nutshell of it. But I, I think what you do to start in terms of what? how you make money is we brainstorm right. about various different ideas. What we then, we then take post-it notes and we pick a vote of we think these are things, and then those subcommittees get appointed for each of the potential ideas to go out and say, is this feasible? Come back and report. So. Yeah. Well, if, we're, if we're talking about an airport possibly opening up, wouldn't it be beneficial if we collaborate with businesses? Well, under the table from people. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It is so expensive to land and take off and park at Bradley Field. That is the reason MGM is willing to put the money up to open Westover because the <coughs> overhead costs of bringing their entertainers in is going to be bled off to them. So they found a way by open, if they open Westover as uncontrolled, they'd save a lot of money. They're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. So let's be clear about that. If Westover became a 24 seven airport, with the way all internet sales are going, I can tell you right now, for people I know at FedEx and UPS at Bradley, there is no room to expand there. There is no, absolutely no room to expand their facilities. So question for you, Jay, then. If there is an airport coming, do the abutting towns get any revenue? Because then it's basically a fully functioning uh, airport that will cause some noise and traffic the, and this and that. The abutters that own the land to the airport would be first in line okay. to get, because, I mean, let's face it, they own it. Mm -hmm. So. Westover itself is also within this study they're doing, which I was told today by the Chicopee Planner, should be done by 1 July, which is not that far away. And if the Chicopee gets the money, it's going to be matched by MGM. And then John, who's on the over there at MWC, would probably know more about what's going to happen in the timetable and when. Um, because one of the big things is the noise area is going to be reduced because of the new engines. Mm -hmm. So that means they're going to buy less property. If they're going to buy less property, that means there's more viable land that might come back on the market in Granby that people could build on because they'd be outside the noise abatement area. But again, these are all things that are out of our control. 
but we have to be proactive enough to know that this is coming and then we got to build off it just like we build off the engineering reports we build mm -hmm. off everything else like that i guess i'll go back to the bigger question then it becomes a a full line airport mm -hmm. but what how does granby benefit from that because how does granby benefit when you have someone like Chickabee that has the entrance to the airport, all the we have an infrastructure. Airport. We have it. We have a, a couple we entrances have to the airport. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Tilly, uh, top of the South Street, Street, South Street, yeah. Tilly Street. Yeah. We have entrances, that's, but that's I mean, I'm talking about entrance that's already established into the airport. That's not a really unless a lot of work needs to be done to it too. But I mean, it's not town property either. That's not our property. Hot dogs at the end of the road. Or not? <laughs> No, I mean, the best hot dogs. The best hot dogs. How do we get out of it? That's what I'm saying. When we get out of the airport, come there. The big picture is right now is with the internet sales going off so much, both of those companies at Bradley Field have to expand. They know they can't because there is no land. So what they're deciding and talking among themselves, one might buy another one out. But to yeah. have two things, and then one might want to move up here. So How that does that might, benefit us, though? The only way that will benefit us is if we have some sort of relocation program to welcome people who work at the airport. No, the because airport. the land they build on will be Granby property, which would be taxable to the town of Granby. No, but what I'm saying is they're going to need people to work there. So <laughs> yes. if you're saying FedEx and UPS are going to come over to Westover for 24-7. I'm not saying both are. <laughs> or one of them. But the point I'm making. They're going to need employees. Yes. The, the, the point I'm making is that. Yeah. So the only way that the, the, the Chickabee side has so much, so many of them land there, mm -hmm. and so many right. buildings are already there for that. Yep. There's already the um, mm -hmm. FedEx over there already. But also, you know, in all due respect, yeah. that's the potential that may happen. It may not. Yeah, there's a million moving yeah. thoughts. You're right. What can we focus on that we can do? We can do that. We can actually control yeah. and. You know, and, and if you want to speak of some of the those couple of things you mentioned before, the, the that one town that had the lever with a lever net, the internet. I thought you know, talk about thinking outside the box. Yeah. They figured out a solution that helped their town in many ways. And makes know. a lot of money. Yeah. What, what is it? Town lever, one of the hill towns. The they couldn't give Verizon and Comcast <laughs> coming for a lot of money, so they went out and they got federal grants and they built their own internet company. It's called Lever Net. Everyone in town is on the internet in town of Leverett now, costs 25 bucks a month. They get better high speed streaming than we do, but Comcast and Verizon, Tom makes about seven figures a year profit. Nice. Wow. Yeah, we're on the phone company. We what, did. What do you It's only owned by a company yeah. name, though. What, what did that cost? What I don't know. I don't know what it costs and numbers, but a lot of it was federal grant type stuff, rural, federal, internet mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that, that's just one potential idea. Um, you know, in terms of that, the thing, bid out. thing is, is you got to you got to get in right at the beginning of these things. Mm -hmm. and figure out how the town of Granby becomes a. That's right. It. Because we, we we know from years and years of looking at it that property taxes alone, even on big buildings, not is gonna not going to do it. No, it's not good. No. You, you need to find a way to actually be in business. Yes. Yeah. And so, that's why I was recommending we start with the smart program. Yeah which we are working on. I would think that would be one of several options that we look at some of the things. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I many, the more the better. Well, that's well, where we come I mean, into play. Another possible option here is an idea. We bid out basically town sanitation to waste management services, and that's what the override was for and all that type of stuff. But it would cost us to set up our own waste management company and do it ourselves, and that would be motivation to have a new dump. I don't think we don't have the capital outlay to invest in that up front. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just saying, when you do brainstorming and you do basically entrepreneurship yeah. idea development, yeah. what you do is you throw every idea on the, on the board that you can think of. Right. Right. It comes in your mind, it goes on the board, no self-judging. But if you then make a determination about what basically may may not work, you focus your energies on that. So just in terms of what other ideas, mm -hmm. there's one, you know. Uh, right. You mean the solar farm funds the, the trucks? Yeah, oh, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the ideas in terms of, I mean, one crazy idea, in China they currently have solar panels, uh, solar panel streets. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in like that, except that they don't have to basically lay down, uh, lay down Vatican anymore. Mm -hmm. 
uh, things are pretty much impervious. Uh, uh, and they generate, you know, basically on the, oh, every road now is a solar cell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are wild, crazy ideas, but if you think about it, the major companies that we now all take for granted all started as really nutty ideas mm -hmm. that no one wanted to yep. invest in. Mm -hmm. So you begin that way, you throw all the stuff up on, you basically then do your feasibility in terms of what to look at, then subcommittees form around that to go out, come back and say, this might be a possibility we need to do this and this, and that's what you start to do. So um, I'd throw an idea out, and that is to partner with large, larger corporations and businesses out on the east side of the state who are incentivizing their employees to move out of Boston mm -hmm. and bring them and invite them over to Grand Bay. Maybe we can work yeah. out something. Especially if we can develop a transportation food. company to get them to Boston back and yeah. forth and everyone would be a happy camper a about that. <laughs> or, you know, the one that we mentioned at the last meeting, can we open up an internet high school for international students who basically now have a real high school diploma from a real United States high school uh, and not, not some private private sector type thing. Because right. uh, that then enhances their opportunity to get into American universities, which I believe they want to do that. Yeah, know. So th those are just, you know, some yeah. ideas, you know, but those are ideas that we can exponentially come up with a lot more as a committee and as a group if we look at brainstorming and doing that stuff. Oh, I, so I, I agree. Guess, oops. Okay. I agree entirely with you. Like one of the things, biggest things going on in the Pioneer Valley, mm -hmm is the rapid transit train system to Boston. It, when that comes into effect, a lot of people are going to want to move into the countryside and go to work in the city. Well, you're, 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 you're absolutely correct. The, yeah. the, the, the issue, and again, it's not to be judgmental, but the issue is those are things that we're relying on other people to do, like the airport, like mm -hmm. the governor basically, to stop being yeah. buddy buddies with the Peter Pan guy, you know, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Uh, what can we do? Yeah. What can we do with self help to help the town of Grandy make additional money besides residential taxation? Well, but not forgetting about not, but, but then being aware of uh, what the things that are happening around us. Well, truly. Yes, absolutely. Those, those are bonuses. Yeah, how we can, you know, yep. those happen, those are great. Yeah. Grandy, Connecticut brings in um, a few hundred thousand dollars more in revenues and sales from their agritourism effort. It isn't a huge amount of money, but it's something, and it's yeah. what they use it to fund their schools. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, you know, we get the it. frame box, which is really cool, it's great, but we don't really do anything there. No. Right. Well, that's right. I, I, I thought, I thought, you know, can we hire an event director? The event director's job would be to go out and get, I don't know, the softball league championship of, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, basically to come to Grandy and hold their event at the frame and generate money that way, you know. Yeah, stuff like this. Yeah, but uh, you know, but some of that money would you know may stick in town. Mm -hmm. But we need to begin by, as a committee, coming up with as many ideas as we can, and then we need, as a committee, to also decide what's the best use of that money, what defines great quality of life for, for this time. I guess my question would go back to Emery's, which is, is this the structure? Is, are these the participants on the committee that should be doing that work, or should there be more okay. representatives? You know, so we're already throwing out ideas, and maybe yeah. the really yeah. the question I mean, is stop throwing out the ideas. <laughs> right, and then it was like yeah. so. Yeah. It's yeah. sort of like well, I mean, well, look, let's, and let's, who facilitates let's, let's say, that let's, meeting? Let's, let's say we brainstorm, we come up with I don't know whatever idea, yeah. you know, and we all say uh, that sounds pretty promising. We're not experts around the table on that. Can we find townspeople in the town who are experts on whatever that particular thing is, and they now become part of that subcommittee and, and uh, utilize that structure? And at one point, too, we can actually have a uh, an open meeting for the public and ask for ideas, thoughts, and stuff like that, because we're just amongst many, many people in, in town, and we may have tremendous ideas that we never may think of. That's right. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like at the last select board meeting, we took a vote and we agreed that we we're going to create an economic development committee, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And unfortunately, we know who the person is going to be on it, besides me. But I, I'm just teasing when I say that, you know, that as well as I do. But we talked about putting an ad in the paper to tell them we're going to create this committee. Is anybody interested in being on it? 
Am I, am I wrong yeah. on what we said? No, right. That's what we said. But that's the point I'm making as far as let's get more people in town. Mm -hmm. Everybody everybody that lives in this town is a stakeholder mm -hmm. in this. So why not open it up to them? If people wish to come, great. If they don't, that's fine too. But let's open it up well, and get some additional well, information. Well, well, in we, addition to opening it up as like a big meeting, why don't we stick up on the town website a contest, so to speak? What do you think would make town money for the town of Granby? Throw your ideas up here. And that's what I'm saying. Like, a, like basically the big post-it notes, except the virtual version of the big post-it notes to everyone. In town. But I don't, I don't have a problem where someone, and I, I don't think you can get a thousand people show up to a meeting. Mm -hmm. You can't give a, a couple hundred show up to a town meeting. But if you've got, if you had 50 people, 100 people show up, to me at that point, they're invested. Yep. They're coming because they have something they, they want to say, and they're invested, and they may just have more knowledge about a certain idea, like you talked about, about uh, an, internet, an internet company or something like that. They may have a, a suggestion, but to go along with that suggestion, yep. they have the information to, to yep. back it up. That's right. So that, that, that's how I meant like that. I don't, yep. you know, and, it, and not to say, and okay, you know what? That's interesting. That's useful. We may take that person and bring them in as part of a subcommittee or something, mm -hmm. you know, is to get, like you said, are we the right people? We're part of the right people, but there's a lot more people that are part of it too, not just us. Yeah. So we had listed out some subcommittee ideas earlier. So we have a business development subcommittee, an infrastructure research committee, uh, marketing, and a committee to decide where the revenue should go afterward. And then we had a big question of what defines a great community. So are those kind of good starting places for subcommittees? Is that the organized, or did I misunderstand how you want well, to I think, well, I think the subcommittees really should focus on, if we come up with revenue making ideas, right. the ones so that we think are basically feasible, okay. right. yeah. subcommittee around each of those ideas separately, go out and investigate and come back and say, so we'll yeah, guess mm -hmm. what, it ain't gonna work. That you know, sounds guess more what? like it West Street, yeah. what we were doing with West Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I we just came together and we're like, yeah, that's... Yeah. I have a uh, question to clarify. So are we... Did, did I misunderstand that there is also an economic development committee that the select board is putting together? Yes. 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 How we, will the, uh, the purpose and purview of that committee... We haven't written the charge yet. But do we anticipate that there will be an overlap between like what we're talking I, about it here. It sounds like what you're saying. It does, yeah. It, it makes you know, no sense to do that. that. I, I'd like to, you know, one committee being charged yeah. with what well, this committee comes up with. Right. Sense. But there's no, the whole but town. again, again, there's no reason to say that committee isn't part of this committee. Right. So I see. Right. The people on there. And that, and that's no, that is, I think that is right. what we're saying. Yeah. Right. And then this economic development is part of this larger concept right. mm -hmm. of what makes a great town you know what is this quality of life that we're looking for in this town and how are we going to get there right. so it seems that again just going back to what i said earlier and looking at what john you shared and the conversation um this is my opinion but it seems to me that the committee composition should be what we decide on first and that includes the membership who's going to be on mm -hmm. the committee, um, the uh, how, how we're going to meet because there was something, uh, the meeting cadence, how often uh, the committee is going to meet, what subcommittees will be uh, part of it. Then we need to do an assessment. That's basically data collection, and again, just uh, wrapping all these things up. We need to assess uh, capital needs, the structural needs. Uh, economic assessment, municipal service assessment, educational service assessment, demographic assessment to see, you know, what the audience is going to be like because, you know, we're talking about uh, a town that is changing in, uh, in uh, composition as well. Then we, I think, need to go back to understanding uh, our strengths and uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and potential uh, risks as we uh, as we move forward with with any of these, then we need to decide on the charge of the committee. Which you know, that if there is an economic development committee, what well, this will actually come earlier anyway. But the charge of the committee, and then we have to put a series of strategies together, which will include the economic side, the quality of life, 
I just jotted down, you know, improve quality of life, promote Granby's natural agricultural resources, create a sound municipal infrastructure, create an educational system that will attract and align with whatever we're doing. Slow down so you uh, get away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got notes. He's, he's got notes right there, so don't worry. You so, have to give her your, your page. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I think if we can do that and go into the, to those. Yeah. I'm fast, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Then we can get to that revenue, I mean, we can then wrap everything into that revenue generation idea. Because the quality of life and services and, you know, things that we're trying to bring to the town, eventually, I think we're tr trying to make sure that we change certain things in this town that will make it more attractive yeah. to be able to no, generate. No question. The revenue, that, right? None of that's going to happen if we don't raise up. Right. But being military, I never believe in reinventing the wheel. Okay, I would approach it like this. We have all surrounding towns. You can call it South Hadley, Belchertown, Hadley, Ludlow, Chicopee, and all that. That's that, yes. Um, <laughs> they all have planners. They already have economic committees. Would you think it'd be advisable to contact our neighbors and see if we could have one of our members join their committee, not to be a voting member, just to learn and then bring the knowledge back from the other town and also to communicate to those municipalities that we're willing to work with them on a particular project as well? I agree with you, Jake. If we can find more information, it's great. Mm -hmm. But we're not comparable to a level. We're not compared oh, to, so that's what I mean. So we're, we're and Granby is unique because we don't have a lot of things that are that the surrounding mm -hmm. towns do have. Well, and a lot of that is infrastructure. Not that's a big thing. Right. But a lot of big businesses and things like that. We don't. And, um, but you know who used to be a lot like Granby? Belcher Town. Yes. Yep. And look and look yes. at Belcher Town now. Yep. Exactly. I mean, they have food truck festivals. They have all kinds of cultural stuff that goes yeah. on in that town. You know, I mean, they've brought in so much mm -hmm. infrastructure and economic development in that town, and that is a thriving town. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it has to do, it has, the thriving of Belcher Town, if you drive through even today, there's somewhere infrastructure being worked on. So, I mean, it, it may sound crazy, but in order, in order to expand, you really do need infrastructure. Yeah. No, it doesn't sound crazy at all. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, here's the other right. thing. You don't need it. It's just by the engine, right? It's crazy good. The problem, the, the ever-present problem, the vicious cycle, is in order to make money, you got to spend money. money. Right? That, right? That's the reality of it. You're right. 100% correct. You are. And, and we don't have either. Right? right? <laughs> well, like, We're not making but, money. Let's take, let's take, <laughs> let's take <laughs> Levernet. Levernet didn't have money either, but they built Levernet with federal funding. You know, you yeah. won't know to reach that level. But there's also, no, I agree. There's I mean, also, we, have, we do have some options with this grant writer coming. I think that's a yes. great, it's a well, fantastic idea. Yes. Just kind of comparing us to Belchertown, there's a lot of things that Belchertown qualified for that Granby doesn't qualify for. Low income housing, they have, so they actually meet a certain criteria, so they're entitled to, or they can, certain grants and stuff like that for the federal government, for the state that Granby doesn't. So it's right, we, uh, how do we get to that point? I don't think we can become a Belter Town or, or something like that, but how do we move forward? You're right, there's some way, somehow we gotta move forward for two reasons, to keep people moving into Granby and keep the people that are here still live, to, to live here. We want people who live here to be spending some money here. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to give some spend it on. Exactly. But that's so, true, but you know, I, I hate jumping into uh, the solution part by profession. But you know, let's just look at some yeah. things that we are. You look at Granby. If it didn't change, we are the town that has most horses per capita. Just you know, we have a lot. So people are looking to do things with you know with that type of uh, mm -hmm. tourism we still consider ourselves at least historically an agricultural town and Jen talked about uh, some towns that are attracting people so we do have some strengths that we have to focus on otherwise you're right everybody's a lot of things have been done tried and this and that but we have to find our own strengths and then mm -hmm. focus on those and I think uh, we do have as a small town we do have a lot of great strengths that we can capitalize on well, I mean what we need to do in terms of the answer to the quality of life is you know it's a famous old saying that 
people don't buy what you do and they don't buy how you do it, they buy why you do it. Right. And we need to figure out our why. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and that's I absolutely agree yeah. with that. And everybody has a different thought or opinion of what the quality of life is. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Let's um, let's start thinking about uh, let's start thinking about structure. Um, the uh, the I think we're all agreed there should be one central group taking a look, making keep an eye on all of the work that's going on for the different for the projects. Uh, the question is whether or not. Uh, everybody wants to be on every subcommittee. <laughs> no. 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 I'm fine with just one. Good. 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 Do we vote? <laughs> so we ought to start thinking about we ought to start thinking about actually putting together uh, some of our names on some of these sort of subcommittees, and I think it was a good list that you had that captured this whole conversation, and um, and start thinking about time frames for when some of this work should start and how it might happen. And in particular, I think we do have to figure out uh, how to react with uh, whether a, a committee of the select board is going to be a separate committee or whether it's going to tap into the work that's going on here. Uh, I would imagine it's going to tap into the work going on here, yeah. working in conjunction with this committee. Yeah, it seemed to I mean, that'd be my thought. It make me a lot, a lot easier there. Or else we think yeah. three of you would be <laughs> but I think we also got to look at what we're going to, you know, come up with the committees, or subcommittees, but first of all, we got to figure out what those subcommittees are going to be charged with. Right. We decide who wants to be part of, you know, what committee. And um, We may need a larger representation on the, the full committee. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think the select board of FinCom and, and the, school, the school board is, right. is, is a representative mm -hmm. enough um, Membership, membership right on the larger committee. That's why we were going to put an ad in the paper to see who re uh, uh, replied and what are their qualifications. In other words, who's interested and what skill levels do they have. But that's but that's for that. That's why I kind of suggest why not have a, an just, open meeting? Because mm -hmm. if you do that, you're going to have people that are, show, that are going to show up that are invested and they want to be part of something. So why not get those people that are, mm -hmm. that want to be part of it and tap in the their resources as well because obviously we don't we don't have all the answers no one's saying we do but if we bring people from the town that want to be part of overall the growth of the town and, and you know the quality of the town I think it's where we need to be yeah. so so then you have a meeting and what that let's say a hundred people show up you can't have a committee of a hundred people I, I'd be surprised if a hundred people want to be well, at even that, 50 it, or 40. Yeah. I mean a committee a larger committee I mean if you have I mean, look at the school building committee. You right? could you could they break them up into sections right. and have them also brainstorm. We, there are uh, partic you know, also participating in the committee work is can be different from being on the committee. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can have a committee that's basically a small group of people, and it could be more than just people in the major committee, but it's just a small group of people, and you can still have kind of an open meeting where the objective is to get the ideas right. in. Mm -hmm. and, but that doesn't mean that everybody who comes to the meeting has a, a vote on right. what's going to happen, particularly in the beginning, when we're really as much concerned about ideas as anything else. So yeah. then we're talking about two different things, because I still think that right. on the committee, it has to be a larger representation. Yeah, I think you know, we should include people like, you know, someone in town who's a successful business owner. We should have one of our farm farmers who's you know, successful in town, we should have, you know, people who we know, we're, you know, that have, we believe have value to, to contribute. There's many other committees I mean, in we don't want to have an infrastructure right? yeah. committee built up of people who have absolutely no idea about infrastructure. Right. We need people right. who know what they're doing. Right. We don't have time to sort through 6,000 people in town and hopefully they have a good idea. If they or have a good idea, submit it. But said. I don't know that we want but see, one of, the biggest of problems, unqualified people one of the biggest problems we have, we do have a lot of committees in town, but unfortunately it's not the same people. Yeah, we need, we, we, we need more. I mean, perfect example is the last annual town meeting. We have 4,552 registered voters and only 209 show up. And it's pretty much the same 209 all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right, pretty much. That We have to change that first to get participation. So you need to get people to buy in. That's and you correct. need to give them a reason to 
would be excited That's about. your wine. But, Maybe yeah. this is the reason. This, this, this could be this, this could this be is gonna be more fun than the town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just choosing what can we have t-shirts made? No matter what, <laughs> <laughs> no matter what side and what question you're on. I didn't want to have your time. So that's what I mean. So you know, we, we kind of talk about and I know I go back to talk about having a meeting and people, you know, people will come with ideas. Not everybody wants to be part of a committee. Right. Yeah. That's not gonna happen because yeah. people look at their own time and say, I don't have time for that, or I don't want to be part of that. But I do have suggestions that I like to tell you about, yep. which is great, which is what is what you yeah, want to hear. Place right? to capture that. Yeah. No, no Jay made a good point. There's a lot of different committees and boards in town, but a lot of them are made up of the same people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can name them right here. <laughs> <laughs> on this yeah, one. That's on this why, I, I think if we, if we think in those kind of terms, that the committee, the subcommittee is a small group of people. But right now, you know, when a, a committee in town has a meeting, there's usually the standard announcement ahead of time. Like, Everybody here can listen, but you can't participate. Your participation is only by your member. That's the thing that has to change for this sort of structure. And so that the idea is that anybody who is at the meeting has an opportunity to participate. But that doesn't mean that they're on the committee, and that doesn't mean that they want to be on the committee. Right. And, uh, work out. and we can, we can uh, you know, this is almost uh, reminiscent of the master plan process that we had, yeah, or strategic planning process through, that we yeah. had. We're going to have focus yeah. groups. We're going to have people who come to different types yeah. of meetings and raise their hands and share their opinions. Yep. So it's a matter of really making sure that, it's going back to what you said about the why, if we can explain to them why this is happening, then they would come with their ideas and mm -hmm. suggestions to, to contribute to the so process. So why don't we begin by planning an idea meeting, a tomboy idea meeting, where everyone in town is invited in. Maybe hire a facilitator that, in essence, would facilitate the process. Everyone in the town comes up. We come up with the mechanism where everyone in the town can brainstorm, get their ideas up in writing on paper, and then we can begin the discussion around that. I think we need a facilitator. That's yeah, we definitely need a facilitator. Really, yeah. mm -hmm. But we have a great asset, and then we go to the five colleges. Right. And I'm sure we can no, find no, some up-and-coming entrepreneurial young professor who yeah. like. Sure, I'll, I'll do that for 500 bucks. Yeah. Th that's one of the other things that you just mentioned. That we haven't really explored, and that is tapping into our resources that surround us. Some of the best ed secondary education in the world. We have not yet tapped into that. We have not tapped into <coughs> to Smith College, Mount Holyoke, we have Mass. you Matt oh no of course that that's that's one of the things you know or Hampshire College or Amherst College the world sends their children that have graduated to this area we've never explored that or tapped into that yet and what they have for us or what they could do for us so there's a massive shortage of uh, how of um, hotels and places to stay during certain parts of the year. Yeah. Oh, right? absolutely. So part of one of the things I was thinking of doing is why aren't we allowing for more bed and breakfast? Is it hard to get a thing? And even just temporarily, or if we could plan, Airbnb. if we could plan yeah. events on the side of, say, Amherst College graduation, we could attract those people because they, as they say, you know, they, they all, my daughter um, works at a restaurant in Amherst and she it's constant and it, no one has a place to stay they're all looking oh, no, for yeah, things to do yeah. if we were to plan like some kind of a festival in the that's same right, weekend that's an event coordinator that's, that's, right but the thing of it is with bed and breakfast it is allowed by the zoning without a problem at all mm -hmm. but the problems you get in with a bed and breakfast depending on how many bedrooms you have depends how big the leach field has to be depends how much land you have to own because we have no so, right. so, I mean, you can, you can have a bed addition to up to yeah. four units. It could even be an Airbnb thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, no, a, no. it's just literally to get people into Granby temporarily for a weekend let's, thing. Yeah, let's, let's, let's. But, let's, 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 let's <laughs> but come on, I have an idea. It's, 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 it's actually it's clear that it's going to be fun to generate the idea. Right. Here we go. Yeah. Actually, 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 that's, that's a real good let's idea. Talk about because when I'm, when I, okay, the liquor store. When I'm working at the liquor store, which is quite often, when you have... Amherst College, their their parents are coming in mm -hmm. to that liquor store, yeah. and what they want to know is where the local wineries are. Mm -hmm. Where's this? Where's the? Where could you? Well, that's 
the Judy's. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. There, there are so many different things that could be offered with this town. And you could actually pinpoint, say, well, in Granby, there's this. In Hardwick, the Hardwick Winery. You know, uh, there's the brewery at East Hampton. You know, so we have that, you know, under control there. But it's one of those things that, how do we ex how do we explore teaming up with the area institutions that they could say and we, we build even a little pamphlet or something? Uh, I think that's getting back to our original. Well, go ahead. Well, I, know, well, I, know. Know. I, say, I even went to say this, this might help us out, but I like the idea of the idea meeting. Mm -hmm. But maybe we target sending out I don't know if you want to call it a special invitation. To the different groups of people, the business owners. I heard a business owner, must have been Dennis LaFleur, say, why don't they ask us business owners mm -hmm. for some idea? Mm -hmm. We want the town to thrive too because it, it helps our business for them. So we, we, we invite these the farmers, the business owners to this idea meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if they all live in town or we, we yeah. make it no, a, they don't. The Granby, the Granby idea meeting. They don't yeah. live in town, that's part of the problem. Right, well, but they, 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 they might want to come to the meeting to and and even if they don't live in town, they have a business in town, so they're, 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 they're well, investing. We it's and they have, have a ideas. lot of businesses in town, we so we could have, uh, we could formulate a letter and just send it that. by snail mail yeah. to... Most of them right on 202. Yeah. Walk up exactly. and mm -hmm. yeah. That might tie into what you were saying. Maybe we yeah. extend that out even further <laughs> and talk to the brewery in East Hampton and say, so want to be Let's structure the next two different kinds of... We have, we have an income committee, or income committees, and we have the expenditure committees on quality of life committees. Oh, I want to be on the spending money. Quality of life. And uh, if for no other reason, for, for, for making sure that they both proceed right away, is that before we have any large, massive in, um, in, in, intake of businesses, we are going to have expenditures that we have to figure out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the uh, but everybody is very interested in the income side, so I think we ought to start and talk about that. And uh, that, uh, and for example, even when we were talking about some kind of open town meeting, uh, we were talking about the income side of that. So how do we, how do we yeah. plan this idea meeting? Well, uh, the first thing is, let's again, look, before we get to the, for the idea meeting, <laughs> let's get the let's get the structure together. Right. <laughs> um, so, am I hearing that? Am I hearing that we should have basically in the beginning just one income committee, if you want to think of it that way, and use that to generate wide-ranging ideas, and then after we start hearing what ideas are, then make a decision as to whether or not. We split that up into smaller committees to yeah. do specific. Yeah. So the basic yes. thing we're going to do is we're going to design from the top down, but we're going to test everything we do by the bottom up. That's and we go we go for quick cheap failure. Right. No. But you start at the top and you lay out mm -hmm. whatever you want in the general statement, and then whatever that builds, you build down. And when you're finally down to the low level and you think you're ready, you test it by coming up. Yeah. And now one of the things. I thought, you might think I'm crazy, but uh, you know that census that we all fill out every so often? I wonder if the town clerk could um, sort that by business people, by whatever, farmers, or whatever like that. Then we would have lists of people to know what is in whose category. Could even sort them by income. I don't think town clerk needs to do it. I think that's already online. Oh, I, I don't know that. Yeah. It, it very possibly could, but there's so much online nowadays, it's hard but to... For far as people, I don't want to invite people. We're talking about we want to bring some of the business owners because they're invested people, or vested interest in the town. Yes, but I don't want to be inviting certain people because people get offended. Well, why did I get invited to something? I'd like to, you know, that's why I said, have an open meeting, open meeting. and yeah. let people just come and we can, we can let them, put in the let paper. Let the business owners know. Yeah. We're going to have this. Yeah, we're going to have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and just I having also a newspaper. wonder if you can separate out the quality of life piece in the, in the income piece, right? Because they 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 connect and they overlap. 
Well, but the way I think the way you do that is by uh, taking a look at anticipating what the possible uh, outcomes might be on the income side. Mm -hmm. Is taking a look at different sort of levels, particularly talking about expenditures. What, what do you do if you have this kind of level of income? What do you do if you have this kind of level of income? Uh, for example, uh, we, we're probably getting to the point where we should be thinking about something as simple as 40 hour work weeks with down employees. And yet, we don't do that now um, because we have additional cost of doing that. And is that something that matches up with not the employees themselves, but with the kind of services that they provide? Uh, you know, the services in Granby uh, across the whole general government are not overspent. <laughs> and there are lots of additional things that could be done, um, and some of which will require additional hours, some of which will require additional people. Uh, we're not even back at the same levels we used to be years ago in terms of you know, when the employees doing things like that. And yet, and yet, those ideas of what would you like to see the governmental services provide for you? And I think you want to know those sorts of things. You want to know what people think about. If you're going to be attracting people into Grammy from the outside, First of all, what do the people who live here think about how adequate it is or is not to do it? Why are people going outside? What is it that you want inside? So, so this quality of life concept, is that, would that also be part of this same open meeting or would that be like a separate? I think it's separate. I think we want to separate those things. Yeah. yeah. I think the open meeting is to generate ideas. Right. We want to generate ideas because obviously if we bring more money into town, I would say we can make quality of life a little better in town, too. And if people buy into their own ideas, they're more likely to participate. Yeah. That's the why. So that's the, that's the starting point. Yeah. Well, I think because when you ask that question, one of the answers is going to be, well, you need to bring more people into the town. You need to, be, you need to bring more families into the town, generating more taxes as part of it. And then, and then I can guarantee another piece of the conversation is going to be, well, we don't have all the services. We don't have walking trails. We don't have biking trails. We don't have, um, you know, sidewalks. We don't have a lot of, you know, restaurants to go eat at. So that's why I was saying that it, they, they connect and they overlap. So separating it out, I think when you have this big open meeting, all of this is going to come up. Which is fine. Well, so fine. What, do you, what do you do? You say, well, that's not tonight's meeting. No, no, no. I, I think idea just, generation is just that. Yeah. Hey, you let people hear me. People talk for it up. That's it. Yep. You got to be prepared to let them vent and take it. And, and there is no bad suggestion. Yeah. Even yeah. though you may think it is, well, you do not it's say it's got to be a controlled meeting, though, too. Right. right. The key thing with those meetings. kinds of meetings is that you're not so much worried about trying to stop people from talking about certain things, but you have to know yourself right. what it is you want to get out of that meeting. Right. So yeah, you have to know what you're, talk. yeah, you have to, you, you have to know yeah. what it is you're listening for, you and that's the thing that you can get out of it. So, so for example, so if we're going to uh, we'll place an ad in a newspaper or something like that, there used to be things in the newspaper that we're looking for people to bring to the meeting. You know, we're, 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 we're expecting as a, as a committee or as a board what we want people to bring as such as ideas. So people, they know when they're coming here, they know what they're coming here for. <laughs> If, if not, people just people, I don't think people aren't going to show up because they're not going to know what it's about. But you also want people to, to, to come here thinking about stuff before they walk in yeah, the door. Right. That, that fits exactly with it. You, yeah. you have to know what your purpose of the meeting is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we do this as a people stand up and give that two minute blurb you know, type thing. I think we do it as people get to go around and write down what these ideas Absolutely. are, idea yeah. generation that way. People can then walk around and say, oh, can we leapfrog off that? That was that more like the master plan exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. process. Yeah. More of a yeah. workshop. Yeah. That, yeah. that yeah. actually worked really well. Yeah. yeah. That worked really yeah. well years ago. Yeah, but in the world brainstorming, judging isn't allowed at first. No. You, know, even, you, you don't even self-judge. No. If it pops in your head, write it down. even if it sounds crazy, you write it down, period. Yeah. The, the, the determination of what's feasible comes later. The exactly. internet sounded crazy at one point, I'm sure. <laughs> it's still crazy. It was. <laughs> well, it started it's not operated it, but. <laughs> it started off as something entirely different. It started yeah, off as a, were crazy as a bunch of right? yeah. Yeah. So in order to, to keep up with the research, though, mm -hmm. this has to be really dynamic. 
It does. Right? Because we know that the same people show up or we, you know, we might have 30 people there. We've done, so, and I'm sure you guys have too, but we've done so many different things over the years and you get, frankly, you know, a disappointing turnout. So mm -hmm. it has to be dynamic in order to really mm -hmm. get people to this forum. We need to make it fun. Exactly. And, 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 you know, like can a banner that says... Can we call it like the kicking and screaming oh, workshop and we're dragging Grandy into the 21st century? <laughs> and come, like and come on and grab an arm and pull? <laughs> What's the future really? of Grandy? It's too much fun, you know, <laughs> There the best to be idea some kind of free real estate taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, no one from Maximilian or Munsing allowed. <laughs> one of the, tell me Sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I learned in this past election, which really surprised me, because I did go door to door, three out of five people weren't interested. They're not interested unless to vote in the national election. They're not interested yeah. what's going on in this town. They're not interested in participating. So that's 60%. Mm -hmm. They're not even interested in doing anything. Yep. And that's just trying to get them to vote for you. Well, Never mind but I do think something. maybe the question is, what are you interested in? Well, that's right. I, 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 I did thought, ask them that. Yeah, and how can we capture a strength right. in what someone has mm -hmm. right. to answer our own problems right. Right. and to move forward what, together? What is of interest to you, and can we turn yeah. that into a generation idea? I would us? say more than half of them said in my own personal quality of life. Right. Yes. But we can ask. Right. We can ask one thing. You know, what, one thing you like, one thing you don't like. Mm -hmm. that, even yeah. that would be mm -hmm. a good start. But I'm just I saying was talking just about more. How do we get them to there show up? In yes. The first place. And that's why I wanted to make the statement on what the problem was. That's no, I get it. Well, that, that, that might be where we want to go to the universities and find a facilitator. Right. Yeah. Someone who's bright, growing, energetic, has done this before. Has great ideas of here. Well, here's, how, here's how they show up. Yeah, but yeah, right. How do how do we get them in the door? Yeah. Plus, I think you might want to do free this. food. Usually works well. Food is usually a really good. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, food would be good. Food, 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 food festival. Yeah. Idea yeah. generation food festival. Maybe do like yeah. a, a pizza night or something like but that. Invite people in. Have this. a slice of pizza. Put down some thoughts, ideas. Well, we'll just throw in this idea right now. We have the taste of chicken pea. Right now, we have the taste of Amherst. Why don't we just have the taste of Granby? We well, have farm to table. table. Yeah. Well, yes, but, but that's do you know who does? Do you know who is in charge of those tastes? Usually, arts and cultural right. councils. Yeah. Do and we I, have one? No, because we, we, we did. Small. They have a budget. We, we, we had one. Yeah. So, so my thought though is, is I meant we for do the town one at one time. School, but I mean, hmm? but no, no, we the, do this. The town had one. Oh, that idea. Yeah, a few times over a relatively short period. I think you need to. I think you need to do more than just one night. Yeah, but all we start with, you know. Come to the idea generation meeting, free pizza. Right. But you need, and again, you need to put what this whole thing's about. Oh, if not, yeah. people aren't showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course. And maybe it is in the form of a question. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. what do you want from your town? And Trisha is behind the camera and she can't town. say anything, but she's dying to say that she's willing to put together a big program to promote everything, right? <laughs> Any one of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do we go about what's next for idea, the idea generation meeting? I agree that it's probably going to have to be more than one night. Right? Yeah, but we, but you, you do it. Maybe we, we create like a series of, so that people know that they're not committing to a forever thing. Maybe yeah. it's like a series of five or whatever. Maybe the next step is to have someone come here and. I think that's the design. appropriate yeah. way. Yeah. Let get someone from the five colleges or somewhere that has this experience and if not like i said our surrounding towns because i deal with the planners and all the towns and we get along fine and i get a lot of information from them and they're not afraid to share all right so who wants to do that because i don't have any contacts there well since i've worked for the university <laughs> i'm a professor in the entrepreneurship department so why don't i just ask my colleagues that's fine like the way you think Yes. Yep. Yeah. Done. Checked it off the list already. Action. Dollars. Check. I'll find it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they may, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get it for nothing. Probably we'd have to pay something. But, you know, well, you get what out. you pay for. You know, uh, I, I think we're, we're going to. You can't pay in hot dogs. Well, except for graduate students. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except for graduate students. Yeah, but they're not around now. They're all home. Yeah, they're, they're all gone. So I think it's so free. We've got to pay, you know, I mean, we, we're going to have to. Invest into it. We, we, we are going to have to invest. We got to put, if, if you will, we got to put some skin in the game yeah. to, to, right. to make this work. 
Since I am the Granby Pioneer Valley Planning representative, still. what do you think? Yeah, I'm still in to the uh, to 30 June. <laughs> um, what do you think of the idea if we get ourselves together, if I can get the planners from each of the town to come in and give us a little thing on what they're doing in their town? Great. The actual planners Same themselves thing. that are yeah. planning yeah. for their yeah. town yeah. to yeah. talk to us. Just for just this committee. Yeah, yeah just for this yeah. committee. Yeah. 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 That would be helpful. It. And that way we could build upon what they have done and what they're working to. And they might want to include us in their plans. Just like I said before, I, I think that's a viable that, way to do so. That might be, maybe should be a first step. And that'll be, this, that and then go that'll be the second step. That'll be the second step. I'll go all the time. Right. See yeah. how I can wrangle a lot of the university. Right. Yeah. Or and I, I can do the same thing. Tell me who they think is good. Right. I can do the same thing. And we can reach out to those people right. and see what they say. Mm -hmm. And the way I'll present it to them is we need you to come up with and run an idea committee or idea meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you need to make it fun? What do we need to get people there? How do we go about the money? So I'm going to call it a planning party. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> With free pizza or something like that. Right. Say, hey guys, we need some help. Oh, excuse me, hey people, because some of them are ladies. What right. I will do. Maybe we should have a new line item piece of budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll leave. So we can do that in the finance committee uh, thing, right? Well, you yeah, so all of, what is it, what do we get now? $175 in our budget? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the, I think there's a limit as to what we need. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. Which, yeah, that's another good idea. Yeah, no, I... Isn't that the Granby slash? South Adler. South Adler. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, there was, I can't think of her name offhand, she had taken over and I had several meetings with her. And then she is an agent for travel and somehow she got moved away by her corporation and she couldn't do it anymore and it just fell down in, into the uh. like it's, But the individuals that right now are taking it over really have never invested in Granby. I'll visit them see what they have to help us out with. They might be able to sure. offer up some contacts. Sure. Mm -hmm. Some more names that could, you know, to what you were saying, mm -hmm. um, that could be facilitators or give us some more ideas mm -hmm. on how to how to attract our residents to some kind of idea generating forum. How do we go about that? Because that has always been a challenge mm -hmm. in this town. Jay, so, you know, how do we yeah. get some buy-in? Um, do we need a slogan? Do we need, you know? We have a one-day liquor license. <laughs> what kind of time frame? That might turn into something. Else. Let me get back to you because I don't know what's all on the ideas. place. Right. And, and a lot of things could be happening. Right. Depending on what's going on, traditionally this time of the year, the planners are very busy for two reasons. Number one, school is out, so they have a lot of activities to plan for the students that are out of school. And number two, the new budget's getting ready to take effect. You think they're closed you three, think, they're closing out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying, that, that time of the year. Is there any chance some person or some people would be able to come talk to us in the next two weeks, for example? Well, there's a few of them that owe me favors. Put it to you that way. <laughs> yeah, but when they come out and talk to us, okay. so you know, <laughs> <laughs> all I can do is ask. That's all I can do in the beginning is ask. Because I, I say I will put some planners right. today, too. Yeah, because now we're rolling into summer and vacations. And, and that well, is going to be the two things. When we set a next meeting day with the goal of having some of the planners come and talk to us about here's what we have for it. In the meantime, I'll go out and see about finding Okay, so. and, and the only thing about these meetings we're talking to invite people, they should be on different nights, not the same night, because some people work certain nights and don't work other nights. Right. And then we might even have to different consider hours. a Saturday or yeah. different hours as well. That's why I was going to bring Saturday in for the different yeah. hours. I mean, it's just like, you know, we're kind of trying to put together focus groups. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Well, I think it'd be worthwhile to put the time in at the beginning here. Yes. Stuff, and then some of you start Otherwise, we'll be coming to the four P's. Everybody know what the four P's are? 
No, but you can tell us. No, I can't because she's got the film on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, and so, I mean, we look at our next meeting um, for, so Jay is going to reach out to um, the different planners around, around surrounding towns and cities. With the hope of getting this one of these planners, two of these planners, at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On July 12th. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking, well, that's, that's it, what the way. Um, you were thinking more in a couple weeks, right? So. Well, why don't you give me a chance first to see what their availability is, and then I will send it to John, and then John can circulate it out, and then we see, look at our time based upon theirs, because we're asking them for the paper. I, I know, but I think we're basically, if we can decide a time and a day, we can tell them, because they may be asking, say, well, this is a date we have a schedule that, mm -hmm. that work for you. Mm -hmm. Get, and if, if you can get somebody to come yeah. within the next two weeks, and, and if they eight. can't, that's still yeah. we still need to keep moving, keep the momentum yep. going. Right. Mm -hmm. And other people can come in later on yeah. to meetings at different times. It would be nice to get somebody. In I mean, yeah. about June 28th. That, that's what I'm thinking. That's the following yeah. week yeah. is the uh, following uh, week. Not the 28th. Uh, okay. But what? the 27th would be, the 28th is a Wednesday. Is a Wednesday. Thursday. 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 Yeah, two weeks from Wednesday. 27th is Wednesday. And there's a school, Wednesday. there's a school meeting, school building committee meeting that, uh, the 28th. that day. Just so what Sorry. night are you thinking? But how about the 27th or 26th? 27th, I can do. How about the 29th? 29th is a Friday. 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 Nobody will come on a Friday. No, I can tell you right now, no planner will come on a Friday. Uh, Wednesday. 27 is good. 27 is good. 27th. 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 Only once, going twice. It's, uh, it's going to be bad for me, but I'll do my best to switch by. Okay. Yeah, two weeks. Um, can I'm we just going to name it Go Grammy. Yeah. I just here, listen. senior. Mm -hmm. Six thirty. Yeah. Uh, can we um, get everybody like an email chain going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have an email list or a list server? Do we have. Well. Uh, I've, got, I've got your emails from the Slack and I, and your emails are all on the school website. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can we say 630? 630, yeah. 630 yes. I can, um, I can also open either, I don't know what everyone uses, I365 or Google Drive, and I can be dumping all of our minutes in there. Google Drive is right? Google? You got it. I'll do that. I can send the email out when yeah. it's done. We can also do an invite if we just create a short time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So then the agenda right. for the next meeting will be if if a planner or planners are not available, what is the agenda? Well, well, I think the agenda would be the Chamber of Commerce the, at the same the, time. I think the agenda would be the idea meeting. meeting. Yes. What's yeah. it what yeah. how are we gonna structure the idea meeting? What's when it yeah. Like? Yeah. how it's gonna look like, how we're gonna get people there, all that type of stuff. So I may or may not have facilitated, probably won't have facilitated by that time, but I think the we hopefully will be listening to planners in terms of what other towns are doing, but absent that, we focus on what's his idea and going to be, how can we make it fun? Yeah. And other thing we have to consider as well, we are pretty much, our budget is closed. So if we're going to start hiring uh, facilitators and stuff, it's going to be after 1 July because everything is earmarked, closed, out, cause there's nothing yeah. else there. Well, we're not gonna yeah, and our next meeting's not until the end of June anyway, so we're not going to do it. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, um, Nothing's going to happen after July 1. Anyway. I mean, you're not going to buy pizza in the night, I tell them? Mm -hmm. I may buy pizza, yes, mm -hmm. but that has nothing to do with the budget. I just bought pizza. I just bought <laughs> one other thing. I like have to be pizza. No, I can't eat I, pizza. You know what? I can, I can get a bunch of hot dogs from Cindy's if you want. <laughs> what do we have? We'll that salad. That would be one of the other things. I'd, I'd like uh, two or three of you to volunteer to meet with me next week, early next week, and flesh out more of this committee ideas of committee structure, so that we could bring, a, you know, a good straw man to the meeting next time, uh, to it, accompany the rest of the other part of the meeting if we have to talk to us and see if we can work out some of this, get this committee structure that too. So I mean, I'll be glad to meet with you. Yeah, I'll meet you. Yeah. Okay, let me let me uh, you want me to stay away you from and uh, set up close, close sometime or? early next week. I, I don't feel we'll just bring in as we bring in. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying. If uh, we, any other business then, I'm up to three. Right then I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Good. Good. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Second. We are adjourned. Yes. All favor? Aye. Any opposed?
Okay. Yep. Oh you didn't say attention. Of course we did. So, Emery? Yeah, and if you said no, Emery. Well, cut, right? Trish? Station.